Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Van Buren in Clearwater County, and we've got a quick one for you today, because the Stephonics have just found out that Target is once again interested in building in this location right next to Costco in Van Buren. The commercial demand is back, and they want to strike while the iron is hot, so they are pulling out all the stops to get this thing built as quickly as possible. In addition, they are going to plat out a small neighborhood around here that's going to be almost exclusively residential. There will be a couple of amenities as well to facilitate the growth, but they basically want to plat the neighborhood and sell off all the lots individually. We might not see the whole neighborhood develop out, but we will see Target. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is take a look at the assets that we have available to us. And we have this lovely Target from King Leno. We're going to place that right next to the Costco. And the game plan here is going to be to basically mirror what we've done with Costco. So I've used move it to spin this around just so we can have this in the right location. And you can see that this is an absolutely stunning asset. It's got a pharmacy. This has got a lot of detail. And a lot of the details that you see here, the bollards, the carts, these are all individual props that we can place as well. So you're absolutely gonna do that. But this is a contemporary looking urban target and uh, it looks like a lot of the ones near me. So I'm excited to bring this into the build. Now we need to build out our parking lot. And this is kind of a trick because th this is the, the part I don't like about parking lot roads is that you've got to use the exact right pieces in the exact right place or it all falls apart. <laughs> so we are going to struggle with that. We can struggle together. So we need to use an outside piece to form the border here. So we're going to come down and I'm going to try to use the guidelines that I have over here to form everything. So you can see I'm using the outside boundaries here. And I don't know the exact length I'm going to use just yet for this. That's why I'm just kind of sending it off into the oblivion. We're going to grab the middle piece here. And what we do is leave one space gap. And I'm going to force zoning here and prioritize the newer roads. I always have trouble with getting the zoning to be right on these. So I'm hoping that if I prioritize the new roads, it'll prioritize the zoning on this particular road and then everything will be good. All right, now we need to close this out. So we'll again, use the end piece, line that up really nicely here. This could be off, I can't tell. We'll have to, we'll have to see. One thing I can tell is that this piece is backwards. The wide sidewalk should be on the outside of the lot and you can just use the upgrade road tool and just flip it and then it's right. So this one is correct. These are all wrong. So this, I've had to upgrade this and then reverse it. And that's how I'm getting it to be right. Look at that. That is looking pretty darn good. So I need to use the access road for the, the couple of little inlets here. And then for the road that extends up from here, I will also need to use this access road. And now it looks perfect. So there's a little bit of guesswork there, but when you get it right, you get it right. <laughs> so. Now what we're gonna do is something that you might not think about. Uh, maybe this is the wrong approach, but it's an approach. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the marquee selection tool and grab everything but segments and nodes. And I just wanna take the whole parking lot. I wanna try to get all of the lights, all of the trees, the islands. This is the one developer, so you'd assume that they would basically do the same thing no matter where they are. This looks pretty good. So I'm gonna copy this. So I should be able to just drop this in. I'm gonna hold Alt to try to straighten this out. And you can see that's pretty darn good. So I can just paste that in there right now. And that is a really quick way of doing this. But I'm still at least one short, I think maybe two short. So we're gonna to need to copy just a couple of more. It's a lot easier over here though because we don't have landscaping it. So I'll grab these and they are really kind of when we're holding down alt trying to get these to line up it can be a real challenge you've got to play with it and you got to be patient and i know that can be really hard but you'll be rewarded by, by your patience and there you go that is the reward and if we want to check how perfect it is this is another good way to look at it look at that that is something else looks like we're floating a bit yeah we're floating so we can fix that easily enough so i'm just going to grab these and there's a, a couple of ways that we could do this. I think going into picker, enabling picker, hitting this button and then selecting this. Now we only have our parking lot lights selected and we can just highlight all of these, come up to one of them. And I guess the very first thing I would do is see if setting it to terrain height works. It probably doesn't. Yeah, it, it actually went up. 
but I, I at least have all of them selected now so I can drop them all down at once. So that looks awesome. That looks awesome. So we have a few more target assets to work in. First, we got this target sign prop and I would assume that target would want as much signage as is possible. So this would be the right of way would begin at some point and the target sign couldn't be there. Like you couldn't put the target sign right here, not just for sightline reasons, because if you were taking a left, you couldn't see beyond the sign, but also because the right of way likely extends back. I would assume it's quite wide here, planning for a future highway or something of that nature. So the target sign might end up back here. So that's where we're going to put it. And then I could see them wanting signs in other locations such as behind it. In fact, we're going to add it here because I know that we're going to extend this road when we build our neighborhood. So we will add that there. Very, very good. So the other things that we could look at, we have a couple of assets. So we have the bollards. So these are the target concrete bollards and you can place these using the toggle straight line mode inside of prop line tool. And we've got to set the spacing a little bit higher. So these are bollards. You see them in front of some targets. The main purpose is to prevent a car from driving into the store. So there's a couple here in front of the glass, but at least in front of the targets that I shop at, you see them kind of all along the front of the store. So I'm going to send them all along the front. The idea here is that if there were people walking on this sidewalk, they couldn't be hit either. Truthfully, I kind of want to just add them all the way through here. I have two there now, and then I'm going to use Bob. So Alt B and I'm going to remove them from the front of the building because that kind of seems like a strange spot to me. So I'll take the probability of the bollard all the way down to zero, hit that button there and we're good to go. Now, there are a couple of other things that we could do. We have this comes with a cart corral as well. We could add that. Here's the thing about the cart corral. We would have to redo our parking to get this to look absolutely perfect. I am not enthusiastic about doing that because I know how difficult it can be to actually get this to work right. So I'm going to add a couple of these. And if I start to see cars parking in the middle of it, I'll fix it down the line. But it's really finicky to get this to work right. So that might be something that I do off camera. But for the time being, we'll add a couple of these and then I will spin a couple of these around and add them over here as well to the front in the opposite direction. Now, interestingly, when you get a building plan, a full plan set, this would come in as a planned unit development and they would show everything, including the locations of the cart corrals, where their windows are, the signage on the building, the whole plan set's very detailed. So this would be something you would see on there. And one of the things that when I've done properties like this, I haven't worked on a target specifically, uh, but sites like this are pedestrian pathways to the cart corral. So that's something that you might look for. How does a pedestrian get here? Are they walking through the through the lot or is there actually a pedestrian path through here? Now, that would be very challenging to make in the game, but that is something that, that, that people think about. Uh, and how would an uh, how would this work in the accessible area? So we have all these cart corrals away from the accessible parking. But if you were in the accessible parking, how would you use it? Well, you might actually need to have these right here. So maybe you add one right here and right here. And you know, if this were a real plan, maybe you would actually take this one and this would actually be on the other side, or you'd add a double cart corral right here. And that would actually probably do the trick because then you could access it from either any of the sides of the, of the, of the accessible parking. Anyway, way too much talking about cart corrals and accessible parking, but it's, it's one of those things when you're looking at a site plan in a plan development, you're really, really getting specific. So things are all just a little bit shifted and I'm not sure if it was like this at the Costco. I'm assuming it is, but as we're going through, it's never bad just to clean up your work and make sure that you're happy with the way this will turn out. Okay. So I'm fairly pleased with this. The one thing I want to add are some shopping carts and we can use the prop line tool for these as well. Cause I want to make it look like there are a number of, oh, it's floating. Maybe that's why these all look off. <laughs> all right. I will fix that and then we'll be right back. Okay. That is much better. That is much, much, much better. Okay. So now I'm going to use the prop line tool to add some carts to the corral spaces. So I've added this and look at this, they're backwards. So we'll go and we'll click on our show hide other option panel and we need to rotate this to maybe 180. And then we're going to shrink this up 
And we want these to overlap so we can get these tight. So maybe 0.5. That's pretty good. It looks like some cards that have been stacked up. Now, obviously, if we wanted to really search for ultimate realism, we would try to hit two of these side by side or get a couple of random cards put in there incorrectly. I just kind of like doing a little bit of this detail work. <laughs> it's floating. I don't know why everything is floating in here, but it's driving me crazy. Okay, and we've handled all of those, and I'm I'm feeling super about this target, if I'm being completely honest. I think it looks awesome. Now we want to copy some of our landscaping, and truthfully, I'm not 100% sold on what we did over here. I think there's some issues. So I might work on repairing some of this while I'm also adding some new stuff. So what we're going to do is highlight all of these. I'm going to slide these back, and then we don't need... So in here, we've got planters uh, or uh, mulch areas. We don't really need those over here because we actually have uh, some grassy areas. So I'm going to add this and we're just going to kind of sloppily place these down and then I'm going to go into move it. So hit M, select these trees and then I want to line them up more or less the same. So we're just going to come through here and we will line up our objects, which will get them to be perfect in there looking very good and then we have the same number and they should be more or less completely in align with those other ones so through here we're just going to copy this and i'm going to do something very similar i could come through and, and try to figure out the number i used but i think it would be just as good for me to come up with a number that makes sense here and then we'll hit m and just line this up spread it out as long as we're using the same tree we're good and then i will eyedropper this on the side whatever grassy stuff this is Okay, now while we're landscaping, the other thing that I would look for, uh, this sort of building would absolutely require landscaping out front. Now, I can't tell because it's winter exactly what this is, but I assume that it's flowers. So I'm going to grab some flowers and put them here, and I'm going to assume it's the same thing here as well, although that's there's not quite as much space here. So we will instead grab some of our bushes and just kind of load this up. So... When I've worked on landscaping plans, bushes aren't worth nearly as much as trees. And we were very deliberate about that because uh, we want to make sure that landscaping that provides more, more cover, more um, offsets to the urban heat island effect, those are provided more points, more benefit, so more of them get planted. So in this area, for instance, we've got a little space right here. You could fill that in with, the, with uh, some cement or something like that, but... I would think that in reality, we look at this and try to get some trees planted out here. And we've got the perfect tree to plant here. You know what it is. I know what it is. We're going to plant the young linden. And we're not going to plant it like that. <laughs> Planting it like an arborvita or something. <laughs> Spread it out maybe 10 meters. There we go. There's nothing that Target would be concerned about here anyway. They don't have any logos or advertisements. So I think it's pretty good. So I'm pleased with the way that this target turned out. I would think that they would like another access out of here and they would love it if we would grant them an access directly onto Mulligan Drive. That said, if we look at our measure it, that would be roughly 600 feet or this many meters, whatever I'm putting on the screen right now. That's not good enough. Uh, not for the types of connections that we're looking at. This is a collector right here. This is an arterial. And truthfully, I would love these to be thousand plus feet minimum or however many meters this is right here that's a little under that this right here is just a little bit above that truthfully i think a quarter mile uh would be ideal but we're not getting that that said for our next one we are getting it because we have the power we've got a couple of more things to to, to check out here though and i want to do that so the number one thing i want to look at is our building spawn points just if you have the mod installed, it's not a bad idea just to always make sure that you're checking it out. Most of the time, this is fine, but we could, we, we know that we have a loading dock back here. So I'm going to add a spawn point for our garbage truck and our cargo Add a point. And then we will add vehicles, cargo truck and garbage truck. So now this is in the middle. We want to move this over. So we'll just slide it over and it's okay with this spot, but I'm not. We're going to move it back as well. We'll spin this around and I want this to be right in the center more or less. So we'll play with this 
and then we'll spin it around. That's height. We don't want to have the height be different. We can turn this around and now they will go directly into here. So that is what we're looking for. Feeling good about that. That'll that'll be a great improvement for this area. Let's get to building a little neighborhood through here. So we've had this power line. This is no longer necessary. We will eliminate that. And I do not want this city facility focused on a, a private road. So we're going to scoot this over and then I'm going to hold out alt to spin this around. We're going to focus this on a road that doesn't exist yet. So let's think about our roadway network. And really there's only one road that I'm concerned about. And that is this road right here. This is a collector. We are going to spin this over and line it up. This is going to basically be our main road coming through here. It'll curve into Mulligan drive. We're not going to do much in terms of our other roadway network. And I do want to focus on this a little bit. Fate provided an excellent description of how I should have actually used reversible trams. So I'm going to show you a fix for that using the adaptive networks. That was something I didn't do a great job of in the last one. And I want to pick that up. Always appreciate the comments and fate. It's just always amazing. So we're going to build. We, why don't we actually use our planning roads? So I want to do something a little bit different here and I want to have a couplet. You might think of this. Why would we do a couplet? It's because we're going to get artsy fartsy with it. There's no reason why <laughs> it's one of those things you'll sometimes see a neighborhood and you're like, why did they decide to have a parkway here? Well, that's what this is going to be. It's going to be a parkway and we're going to basically have this separation so we can run trees down the center. I don't like what I did here. I think it looks pretty bad. So we're going to use our arrange at line mode and try to improve this some. <laughs> yeah, and that didn't do what I was hoping it would do. And that'll actually probably work. So we can come through here, switch. Yeah, that's this is pretty terrible. <laughs> we wouldn't want this to be quite this long. I don't know that there's much I can do short of this is where you're going to move it. And I guess maybe if we get rid of the extra nodes. Yeah, and it didn't really do what I was hoping for. So we might just have to live with this being a little bit wonky there. And then I want this curve to be a bit more gentle. So I'm going to actually add a node back so that I can sweep this around. So I will pick these nodes and I want these to be nice and lined up. This isn't perfect, but it's better. OK, we're going to call that good enough. And I'm not going to let perfect be the enemy of good here. It's it's going to be fine. We've got a lot of trees here and they are going to be disruptive and they're going to make it difficult for you to see and for me to see. So we're going to remove them. We will add a ton of these back and I will tell you that the golf course is already very upset about this residential neighborhood being developed there and they've got some plans on things that they would like to do to their property to uh, minimize disruptions uh, from a, an urban neighborhood. Now, this is something I would absolutely see them being interested in finding ways to ensure that uh, the seclusion and private feeling of the golf course is maintained. Now, I want to find the exact center of this. So I'm going to turn grid on and try to select that center node. You see, it's not going to work with me. So I'll need to deselect that and basically make it up. Now, you might wonder why I even care about this. We're going to make a circle park. So we're going to go, we'll go seven units up, seven over. And then this is not meant to be something that you speed through. So we're going to go straight in and I'm going to send this straight out the other side. This is not permanent. It's temporary, but we are going to, we are basically going to have the same layout generally on this side where we have the couplet that comes into a collector. So I mentioned that I want this to be over a thousand. So let's see where we're at this right here would be 1,275 feet or this many meters. It's actually pretty good, but we're going to go even further than that. And we're going to take it to here. And that is almost 2,000 feet or this many meters, which is awesome. That is a good distance between the two. And it's something I feel very, very comfortable with. We're going to bring this up approximately 10 meters there or 10 units rather. And this time around to find the center, I've just made these this this road here. This is separated by one unit. I've used moved it, move it to connect or to select the nodes. And now I was able to uh, move that to what appeared to be perfectly centered to me. 
Maybe it's a little bit off, but visually it's fine. So I'm happy with it. So we're gonna send this straight up until we get too close to the properties over here. And then what we're gonna do is use our curved road tool, find this, oh, that's not straight. So we're gonna actually need to take it from the circle because we want this to line up very nicely. And then I wanna find the center here as well. We're gonna have a normal street right there. Nothing all that special. We're gonna turn off our road guidelines and this is gonna be a pretty traditional neighborhood. We're just gonna go up 10 units. We'll go 10 up and 15 over and then send this down, which is 15. So this could be a 15 by 15 neighborhood. Now, not having road guidelines is kind of coming back to, to haunt me. So I'm going to turn them back on and I'm actually good with that. This is a relatively suburban area, even though we are in the, the, the city, it's still not urban in any, any way, any meaningful way here. And then I'm just checking to see what this is. And I see that this is nine units to get down and 15 over. So I'm going to back this out. We'll make this, we'll go up nine and then over nine. And that is how we have a nice angle here. And that is not quite perfect, which is unfortunate. Here's how we fix it. I'm going to send this directly over Then I'll get rid of this. And then hopefully we can use our line tool again, find this, curve it in. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. Looking good. So I wanted to make sure that we maintain access to this road because we are going to turn around our trams within this neighborhood right here, probably right here before we get to this curve. And then we want to have an access road to target here. And then we'll have another little frontage road right here. Feeling good about that. Feeling really good about that. So we're going to get these roads upgraded to what they need to be. And this, again, this is target property. So we'll use some of these private roads here to get in. And then this is a city street. This is the, the main collector through here. We're going to upgrade this. And then we're going to use two-way roads here. Or one-way roads here. Two you one way roads though i want this to be a parkway we're not going to add trees to the road itself we are going to add trees around the road or in the middle of the road so we will just build it up this way and there we go and then we're going to eliminate all of this nonsense within the circle this is going to be a park it's going to be the the main feature of the neighborhood and we need more connections to this collector this is going to be a relatively low speed collector and all of the connectivity through here is there to reinforce that. So lots of connectivity. There's going to be single family homes through here. I mean, there's not going to be a ton of traffic. I don't see this becoming a major cut through. And truthfully, on this end with this connection I made here, I'm rethinking that. I think that if we would have stubbed this in just a little ways, we could have had a much nicer connection. Yeah, that looks uh, considerably better. I am much more okay with that. That looks reasonable to me. So the first thing I want to do is actually upgrade our tram line. So we are going to extend our tram and let's go steal a station. I know that we have one over here and while we're over here, we should fix it and take a look at a couple of things. So first of all, let's get rid of all these, this line work that I, I did. And you'll notice that it looks good. Everything's connected except for the, the void into the upside down. Things will look okay. And this, we just hit this with node controller and look at everything's fixed now. You might wonder, why does it look like this? It's because I came in here, I fooled around with it. And apparently once you fix it, once it's fixed forever. But I came in and I looked at the adaptive networks, which you can reach with control alt A. You click on this and it allows you to do a ton of a ton of things to these uh, little stations here. So it actually, you, you gotta look at this closely. If you hover over these things and it lets you change things in the pedestrian realm, lets you change things in the vehicular area within your station area. So you can actually, you can see that uh, there are uh, some overhangs here to protect you from the elements. You can remove those if you want. <laughs> you could add in a fence on the side. You could add in a short wall on the side of the tram. You could change the platform so that it is cobbles or grass. You could add foundations underneath the, the actual tram track. So it gives you a lot of customization. I'm really excited to see this. The other thing it allows you to do is remove some things like your lighting. So you can do custom lighting if that's what you want to do. So you can remove the street lights or the other pedestrian props. This is super cool. So I would highly recommend you doing this. The first time you go in and you click on this adaptive network and then you click on one of these stations, 
all of the issues with the tracks are remedied immediately. So that's what I wanted to show you because that was a huge improvement. And again, thank you to Fate for informing me of that. All right, we're gonna add our station right here and then we'll add our track right through here as well. And then we'll move our stop back into our new neighborhood and add a stop back here so that all these people aren't left high and dry. There we go. Now through the rest of our neighborhood, I just want some normal city streets. So I'm going to be real careful. I could inadvertently grab this. Don't want to do that. We'll grab this street right here and upgrade all of these roads. There we go. I like that. I think that that looks nice. Okay, so I want to add a little park through here. We're going to make this completely custom, so we'll need to paint a district. So let's go ahead and we will make a little park district. Paint park area. Look at that. It's the, the perfect size. Bloop. There we go. And now we will go ahead and make a park. So we're going to make this a city park. It's not going to be anything all that special. A main gate in one area, a side gate in a couple of others. And then we'll use move it to perfectly straighten these. This is something I wish we could do <laughs> without move it. When you got the tools available to you, you use them. And now I want to add fences all the way around here. I'm just going to attach these. We'll go into move it. I'm going to grab these, hold down alt. I guess alt isn't doing what I was hoping it would do. I was hoping it would snap, but we can still just grab it and eyeball it into place. And it looks good enough to me. So I'm going to do that for the other ones as well. And now through here, I just want this to be super basic. We're going to have a climbing frame through here and a picnic table, maybe a sandbox or two. This is really just a place for the neighborhood children to enjoy themselves. And this would be a place that I think a lot of people would be excited to live by. So through here, we are going to actually place a couple of houses facing this park. And then I want to zone everything else in. So let's go ahead and create a neighborhood here. We're calling this the cherry district. I don't love that. It weren't cherries here. We can call it, we'll call it pine forest because you always name a neighborhood after what used to be there. <laughs> we do need a name for the park. And truthfully, if you have a better name for the neighborhood than pine forest, drop it in the comments and we will uh, potentially make that change. All right. So the reason I wanted to add a neighborhood is we are going to set our theme here. We're going to enable theme management for this district and we're going to go for American Eclectic and get rid of everything else through here. Now, I want to set the minimum level to three. You might think that's crazy, but I think it's going to be fine. I don't want any of the trailers to spawn in. And I think at level, well, let's try level two. I think level two will be fine. And then we'll set random spawns. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't ever get anything growing in here because they need level one to get to level two. But I, I think that the value is not going to be high enough and I'm okay with that. So let's set this here. We'll see if this works. And then I'm going to go ahead and place a couple American Eclectic buildings around Autumn Hill. So I know that I could search for these by just searching for ECL. And now I have the Eclectic set. I have my hotkey set and that is question mark. So I'm just going to place a couple of these buildings. And the whole reason I did this is we're going to take some of these and add these around the park facing the park. Even though this is an arterial or collector, rather, this is going to be a super desirable place to live. Everyone is going to wish that they lived around the Circle Park. And these lots are going to sell very, very fast. I would assume that these would be the very first ones in the whole neighborhood to sell. And this park gets built first. And the reason why is that the Stephonics, they've got to unload this. They've been carrying this land for 10 years, maybe. Just the carrying cost of this alone. Think about the interest. Okay, and we've got this neighborhood basically set around the Circle Park. I think we need a couple of trees and then we'll zone everything else in. And in fact, let's just do our zoning now. And it's interesting. Something got off skew here at some point and that is going to just destroy me. <laughs> we're going to try to fix it. And this is impossible to fix. So we're going to call it a platting error and I'm going to not let perfect be the enemy of good. It will bug me. It will bug me. I will just need to not look at this. Don't, I gotta just calm down. I'm gonna lay out this block here because of how messy this is. And hopefully that will make me get over this. <laughs> because it's gonna drive me nuts otherwise. All right. We need to get some water pipes underneath our road right where they belong so all of these buildings do not disappear.
So 15 by 15 is about as inefficient as can be for water pipes. <laughs> so something to keep in mind. The other thing is, wow, the water pipes underneath the country club are very, very not good. <laughs> so we'll uh, back those out so we're not underneath any property lines. And then we'll have this one step out here. So that'll do the trick for us. And we're starting to see some things grow in. So I'm going to add in a bunch of these homes. I am very concerned about how these are going to grow in. I'm going to add some separation between these. And that's kind of an acknowledgement of how far out we are at this point. I would expect that these are a little bit, a little bit bigger lots. Interesting thing, though, is you'll go out to a certain distance out of a community generally and lots are larger and houses are maybe moderately sized, maybe even kind of small because of post-war building practices. And then all of a sudden the lots get tiny and that's kind of the, the newer influence on, you know, suburban development, the newer, the newer suburban development. And for a couple of these blocks, I think again, I am going to manually place the homes. And this is one of those blocks because we have a bit of confusion here because of our parkway. Okay, for the most part, that's pretty good. And here I was going to place all of these manually, but I am almost of the opinion. I shouldn't say almost. I am of the opinion that we just have larger lots here and these homes. We don't have any homes facing the highway. Now, there's some confusion happening right here, and I think we've got an extra node. So I'll just get rid of that extra node. Yep, you can see that there are two. Get rid of that. Looks good. And now I'm going to prioritize some zoning through here. And I'm seeing some weird stuff going on. We'll get rid of the zoning on this road. And then we'll only have one house right here. That will be good. We're going to add some dense landscaping to separate these homes from the road. And then we're going to fill the rest of these in ourselves. We I, I mentioned adding a couple of service buildings, though. And I've gone through before the episode and took a look at what we're actually missing in this area we aren't missing fire health police we could have a school that would be a rational thing to add through here uh high school anyway we, we're doing fine at elementary school and i just don't think we're prepared for our high school yet so we're going to avoid that what we are going to add through here is elder care and child care so those are things that i think are sorely missing this lot would be kind of a weird spot <laughs> truthfully we're going to place our elder care there it's a good and a bad spot. You have forest behind you. Nothing's going to get built here ever, but you have highway noise next to it. So I think it would be one of those weird spots that maybe something like this gets built there. And then same thing here. We have a transition between our higher density uses and what becomes ostensibly a single family neighborhood. So we're going to add in uh, one of our, our child health care centers here. And that seems to be a fair use for that area and a swimming pool on the other end. And that's how we transition between our higher density uses and our low density uses. And I'll get rid of, we got trees popping up through here in a couple of spots. We'll get rid of those looking good. And then I mentioned needing to place just a couple of things ourselves. We're going to do that right now as well. And then I will filter this. So we only see levels that make sense for the build. So we go to building level and I want a minimum of two maximum of five and it looks like two does have some of the growables so i'm gonna say three so i can avoid all of those and now i should be able to just place these fairly rapidly There we go. I think that that is all we have through here. And now we need some trees to line this area. I think we'll go with some jacarandas through here. And then in this park, I'm going to plant oaks all the way around it so that it gives you a sense of seclusion and privacy inside of the park. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's good. We need to make sure that this park is free too. the, the goal of this wasn't to make a ton of money. And yeah, this neighborhood at this point is looking pretty good. It could use more trees. I think that would be the number one thing that we could add through here. And I was thinking of adding a wall behind this, but I think I'm going to skip it. Actually, I think that it's fine. We'll just 
densely forest this. So I'm going to select some of these trees over here, control C, and now we can pop on through here and just add kind of a wall of landscaping behind this. And then through here where it's really tight, we'll add in a, a pretty unnatural looking thick row of pine trees. There we go. I think that does the trick. We're going to add in some jacarandas right here as well. Or, or oaks is what it's trying to add. <laughs> some jacarandas so that our residents are protected from all of the crazy noxious noise that we would see or noise and lights that we would see from Target. And I do want to check this out at night. How bad does it look? It's not great. It's not great. So I think we're going to need to do better than that. So with this on the same setting, I just went halfway through these trees and now we have kind of a double, uh, double the, th the thickness of the foliage here. And that's still not good enough in my opinion. So we're going to plant a row of hedges underneath here as well. We'll get these nice and tight and that really didn't do anything, but <laughs> there's only so much you can do before Target starts complaining about what you're forcing them to do. So there we go. We're going to go with that. And I'm going to add in a couple of trees in between the lots, just something to spruce it up a bit and make it feel a little more lively. Okay, so we didn't go super crazy with the landscaping, but I did. Uh, actually, I did. <laughs> So we'll get rid of this. I actually meant to add in a row of pine trees back here, not a bunch of oak trees, but that's what happens when you're too far away. So this will be a concession to all of these homeowners, a way to make it a little bit more palatable living this close to Mulligan Drive is you get this thick row of landscaping all the way around your property. And now I think it is much, much, much more palatable. And with this, I do think it's about time that we take inventory of what we've done, which is a lot in a short period of time and have a brief city tour. this is a cozy little neighborhood and our targets looking really good. I'm really pleased with the way that this turned out. Sometimes these quick <laughs> little, little, these quick little neighborhoods are some of the most fun things to build in the game. Uh, it's not the most dense thing in the world. It's not the crazy uh, infrastructure project that you might get really jazzed about, but it is a nice little neighborhood and it's well designed and I think it would be a good place to live. And I think that these people would have a lot of pride in their neighborhood. They would, it, it's designed in a way that I think would foster a sense of community. So I'm pleased with it. And I hope that you've enjoyed this episode because I've really enjoyed making it for you. If you enjoyed this, please consider hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. We have a very big project coming, but I knew that it would be better if we had this done. So can't wait to see you in that one. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.